Young scientists bring fresh ideas to NATO's science and technology organisation. They have new ways of looking at the problems that NATO faces as it looks to the future. Everyone can benefit uh, from uh, trading experiences and trading knowledge with uh, other peoples because if we broaden our minds, we can reach amazing destinations. My area of expertise is focusing on current and future LAN platforms. Securing and, and making uh, reliable wireless communications. Maritime anomaly detection, microbial bioengineering and synthetic biology. Antenna design. Unmanned ground vehicles and artificial intelligence. Anomaly detection in the maritime domain. Communications and radar tracking of objects in a personic orbital flight. Economic statecraft. The wireless charging. Communication electronic warfare system. Electronic warfare against imaging radars. The earlier Korean scientists play an important role as of now in our collaborative program of work. They bring the necessary courage to take on the really hard problems and the energy we need to solve the problems of the future. And in return, they get the opportunity to meet with the best and brightest minds in the NATO and allied nations in their field of study. My name is Luke. I'm a principal engineer from the UK's Defence Science and Technology Laboratory. Alongside this role, I'm also a captain in the British Army Reserve Forces. My name is Barbara Hrnčířová and I am a PhD candidate in microbiology at Masaryk University in Brno, Czech Republic. My name is Karel Berlin. I'm from Estonia, but I'm currently working as a doctoral researcher in uh, Tampere University in Finland. So the example that I'd like to, to talk about um, is one of the projects that we have under the NATO Applied Vehicle Technology Panel. So this activity is focusing on augmented reality um, and how that technology can improve the situational awareness for armoured vehicles. I am interested in finding a way to replace oil and other fossil resources in industry. Particularly, I'm working on engineering bacteria to use waste plant materials to produce bioplastics or biofuels. My research expertise is in securing and, and making reliable wireless communications with emphasis on full duplex radar technology and interference mitigation. International collaboration in scientific and technological matters um, facilitates solving the emerging security challenges We are constantly having an influx of young scientists right out of school, uh, maybe right after their PhD, maybe doing their postdoc with us. And these are the people that are actually doing the cutting edge science. I mean, someone my age isn't going to be you know, designing a convolutional neural network, whereas the people that are coming right out of school, the early career scientists, they're the ones that have the new technologies. They're coming up with the new ideas. I'm Erika D'Afflisio. I work for NATO STLC Marie in La Spezia within the data knowledge and the operational uh, effectiveness program. My research topic is basically focused on um, maritime anomaly detection that aims at improving safety and security at sea. As an early career scientist, I do not yet have an extensive uh, personal international network. But what the STO has done, it, it has provided me with a perfect starting point. I think it's a really great experience being here and getting to meet other young scientists, but also from different countries and, and see you know, the different areas that people are focusing on.
sensor technology, weapons technology, command and control, things like quantum technologies, machine learning, hypersonic technologies, protection of the human. So for instance, how do humans protect themselves in dangerous environments? Also, how do humans interact with the machines? And we also do modeling and simulation. This work is essential to protect the more than 1 billion people living in NATO nations. Communications is, is one, always has been and always will be. The other one at the moment is the use of autonomy and how we mature those systems to enable us to uh, field a capability that's robust. The third I would describe is counter UAS. As we've seen in, in Ukraine and the, and the battle and the war over there, UAS are prolific um, and one of the main systems that they are using to prosecute effects. So understanding how we can better harness counter UAS technology will help us in the future. I would say uh, robotics is one and the second one would be, the, of course, the artificial intelligence because it's something that is evolving with a very fast pace and uh, Sadly, we do not understand it enough. It's evolving, it's getting there, chat GPT and so forth. There's like a lot of technologies emerging. So we have to like m put more effort into understanding and even evolving them more because there's a great potential in them. Military capabilities are ever more dependent on high technology. We saw in the strategic concept, which was agreed by NATO heads of state and government in Madrid, they agreed that emerging and disruptive capabilities are changing the nature of warfare and that success on the battlefield is increasingly determined by technological superiority. So our heads of state and government are in no doubt that high technology is the key to battlefield success in the future. And the purpose of the NATO Science and Technology Organization is to deliver that scientific excellence in order to maintain NATO's technological edge. It's really important for NATO to keep in touch with early scientists because if you do not want to lose touch with what is happening currently in the uh, whole field of research, in the whole field of science, um, you need to get new ideas and the best new ideas you will get are from young people.